There we go. If somebody can let me know if it's visible. Yes, great. Um, let's get the chat out of the way. There we go. Um, okay, well, um, yeah, welcome everyone to this hackathon session. Uh, well, hackathon's being used a bit loosely here as a term, but um, <clears throat> when the proposal options came out for the conference, well, this is, um, well, a kind of aspect of all of these things we're talking about that I find personally very interesting. Um, basically, well, what's the lowest resource possible way that we can make our science more open? So that's going to be the core content. Um, I am organizing this, but most of the work will be done by all of us together. Um, so uh, slides, there we go. Um, so this is a brief outline. We've got about 40 minutes. Um, well, I'm going to give a brief introduction and background to the general idea. Then we'll have about 20 minutes of breakout room discussions on different cases, uh, predominantly you. Uh, and then we'll come back together for the final five or 10 minutes for some wrap up and conclusions. So first I'm just gonna go through some general background to set the scene for, for this discussion. So, well, what you see here is one of the many possible visualizations that you can find on the internet um, that demonstrates all the, or not all, but potentially many of the aspects of what open science really refers to. Um, with many of these things, I'm not saying this is the gold standard or something, but this gives an example of all the different aspects of ways we can consider openness, transparency in, in science. And so you see, well, things like open publication, open data, reproducible research, uh, evaluation, metrics, peer review, all these sorts of various things, tools, methods, and, and so on. These, of course, are mostly things that most of the people in this uh, summit are more or less aware of uh, in most of these aspects, and, well, at least are trying to learn more and apply more of, of these aspects on our work. Um, and of course, well, this is the Stork Summit and the Stork's mission is, is very close to this. So when you actually read through the, the mission and uh, well, how we achieve these aims as a society, it's, it's all about improving the openness, the transparency of, of what we do, how we do it, uh, how we communicate it, how we make it available to others and, and so on. So th this is not new information for you, but um, this is us as a society. Uh, unfortunately, um, we're a very small portion of the broader kinesiology and sports science field. And well, this uh, piece of work has been mentioned a few times in the last day or two already. This was the registered report uh, on the nature of our literature. And well, this is the rather depressing conclusion in the end. Uh, the combination of the low proportion of null results, lack of sample size justifications, low numbers of pre-registrations, near absence of open data, and complete absence of replication studies compromises the credibility of kinesiology as a field of scientific research. So this is obviously a snapshot of the whole field. This was just uh, 300 articles in, in three of the core journals. But yeah, as has been mentioned multiple times, we don't really have a reason to expect that by studying this in more journals or more articles, we would see a, a very different outcome in the end. Um, and what this means simply is that, well, the, the people in this summit in this room are the exception rather than the rule. Um, we're the people who have already, to some extent, bought into the, the, the idea and values of open science. But this is not the majority of the field, um, at least not in practice. So my experience is that generally people are open to these ideas, but that's uh, the first step along the way to actually applying and practicing these ideas. Um, so assumptions for this discussion. Um, the hypothetical aim of what we're going to discuss is to improve the application of open science practices a little in a lot of people. Because at the moment, we have a little people doing relatively a lot of open science practice, which is fine. One, it's not necessarily that it has to be one way. And it's obviously, uh, as the registered report revealed and many other related publications have shown, it's, it's not the general rule that these, these uh, practices are applied. And the discussion today places priority on the ease of application of practices, not the implied value of the practice. So you have to try and separate in your minds. We're not talking about the most effective ways to open science or the most societal, societally valuable practices or the ones that give you the biggest bang for your buck. Um, it's simply what is the easiest, fastest way that people can improve 
uh, their application of open science methods. So these are the aims. So we're going to discuss and propose the easiest ways for researchers to open their science in terms of perhaps cost, time, pre-existing knowledge, etc. And to get us started on this, at least, we're going to discuss around specific hypothetical cases of researchers at different career stages. So the discussion doesn't necessarily need to focus the whole time on these, but these are some cases as a starting point of discussion. And the breakout rooms are going to have one case per breakout room. So you can join a case either that you might find interesting in general, maybe because you can relate to it either as yourself or as a, you know, as a colleague that you're trying to convince to encourage their practice. So um, hopefully in this discussion, you'll also then pick up some tips for yourself. Um, but then actually the aims in the end are following this discussion. Um, we'll actually take these outcomes uh, and form a group of people who are interested in taking this forward into a, an accessible short tutorial style article that might uh, present these very easy, very fast ways to open science um, and include any necessary resources or links that people can apply so that we have a very short, straightforward document that we can give to students, colleagues, et cetera, where there's maybe 10, 20 ways that they can very quickly for no cost improve the openness of their science. That's the, the general goal. Not that this solves the world's problems, but it's tackling the issue from a slightly different angle than maybe has previously been done. So I'm just going to give you a moment. We have um, I prepared five cases, but I think with given the number of attendees at the moment, we're going to keep to the first four, just so that there's sufficient numbers in, in each group for a discussion. So these are the first two cases. I'm not going to read them out. I'll just give, leave them on the slide for a few moments. So feel free to read through and then I'll show the next two in a minute. Okay, so I'll move on now. These texts are going to be available in the breakout room. So I just wanted to give you enough time to have a quick flavor of the case in each situation. So here are the, the following two. I'll leave it up for 30 seconds or so. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen just now. So um, we have a few people who are going to enter specific breakout rooms and, and paste a link. There's a Google Doc prepared um, that everybody should be able to see and, and edit. So once we go into the breakout rooms, there'll be one person who can provide that link and also take some notes. Um, if anybody else wants to jump in and take notes and lead discussion, that, that's also great. Um, and when we come back at the end, um, we'll do a quick review of, of some of those notes and see if we see some, some interesting or, or common themes coming up. So the, the choice is open. So for the people who would like to be involved in the discussion, you, you're welcome to join the breakout room, which is labeled uh, accordingly. Um, we're not going to go for case five. There is a room for case five, but because of the numbers, um, we'll just use the first four cases. Um, so feel free to join those now and then yeah, we'll, we'll give it a minute to let everybody join who wants to discuss. And then within the breakout rooms, we can start discussions around that case. So yeah, I wish you a, an interesting and productive discussion. And I'm going to time it to approximately 20 minutes and then I'll give a, a one minute uh, uh, warning um, before the end of the, the breakout rooms close. Um, I saw a hand raised there. Does anyone have any questions uh, before we break out? No? Okay, I can't see the chat at the moment. I'm not sure if anybody posted. Nope, okay. So let's head into the, the breakout rooms and well, we'll see each other again in approximately 20 minutes. Chris, uh, I'm happy to moderate one of the rooms. Uh, as I said to Ema, which room would you like me to go in? Oh, he's gone.
<laughs> I was just sending him, you a message. Let I'm also me just look at how many are in each group at the moment. So you might want to join the one that's got the only one or two people in, I guess. Actually, Sam, no, I know which one it is now out of elimination. You are going to be the pre duck.
Okay, as far as I can see, the breakout rooms are now emptied. Is that correct? Am I seeing correctly? We've got everybody back? I think so. Okay, well, um, in the end, we had uh, three groups um, chatting. So there were two smaller groups that we decided just to, to join to keep the discussion going. Um, I was having a look in, in the Google Docs and it looks like there were lots of interesting points. I hope the uh, discussions were, were interesting. Um, we have two minutes, maybe one person from each of the groups wants to give very, very quick, some key points that they thought were pertinent in the discussion. Anybody from case one? I can go ahead if no one else wants to. Sure, go ahead. Sure. Uh, we thought first it might be good to bring forward materials to the advisor related to implementing open science practices for beginners, like the seven steps paper that exists. Um, also looking how uh, you can show the advisor, some of the current practices that they undertake, like filing an IRB application, how that can be transitioned into a pre-registration to show that things that they're doing are really parallel and, and can easily be changed into open science practices. Uh, we thought that finding tutorials that are available online or at conferences is a really easy way in which the individual as well as their advisor could gain these skills, uh, as well as identifying someone with uh, experience using open science practices to sit on their advisory committee would be a good way to have this as well. We also recognize that the PhD trainee is going to need to take the initiatives and really um, shape what they want their educational experience to be like if they want open science practices to be involved and, and take the lead on that. Um, uh, Lastly, I, th I think I won't say them all we have here, but really advocating how using open science practices is front loaded in terms of effort. But once you have those skills or that framework in place, if you've done it for study one, then you've kind of created a good pipeline for study two and study three that'll make it much easier. And that's kind of the argument we had against, you know, it's only a three year degree and they only have so much time, but we think that's something that would be very helpful as well. Yeah, great, thanks a lot, Denver. Um, well, I, I was in the case two discussion, so I'll just briefly mention, we, we focused most of the discussion around data sharing. So this was the PhD student is nearing the end and thinking about well, what, what can they do? And so of course the issue of retrospective open data sharing came up, which is a tricky situation. So we were talking about different situations related to that. So again, also the IRB protocol as a makeshift pre-registration in some cases might provide some information at least for some kind of conceptual pre-registration, if not very precise. Also, we discussed that um, partial data sharing might be possible. So there's certain sensitive data or personal data that probably is difficult to share retrospectively, but um, well, partial sharing of data related to primary outcomes, for instance, is still better than no open data. Um, and also looking at outlets with post-publication peer review where pre-printing is not an option for time. So, And then I'll ask for a quick update from case three if anyone wants to volunteer. I'll, I'll summarize. Um, yeah, I think perfect. The one thing uh, that Rosie brought up was for, you know, we're just talking about ways to like drive the requirements for tenure to be more aligned with open science and that you go to your funding agency because around the world, more funding agencies are demanding certain things like just having your, papers open that could kind of be a way to you know have a mandate from somebody bigger than just you saying you're interested in open science to you know when you're facing the tenure committees we also talked about librarians being a source of funding or just driving OA on certain campuses um we did get into like the doing things it takes some time to front load some of the practices, I think as the other two mentioned. Um, also looking to recruit students with interests to, and then kind of like springboard off them. And I think, I think those were the main ones. Great. 
Great, then, well, in the interest of time, I'll wrap up. So we can make these uh, Google Docs available to everyone at the end with the links. Um, and if anyone is interested in continuing those discussions and while well, working those notes as a starting point for some kind of tutorial, then feel free to get in touch with me. I'd be very interested to hear if people would want to do some, uh, some work on that. So thanks for your participation. I hope the, the discussion was interesting for you. So thanks for a really great session, Chris. I think that was a, a really nice session and I think it's really nice that we're now moving into discussions and action plannings and uh, yeah, all great. Thanks for that, Chris. Um, actually, our next session, uh, I'll stop recording on this.